Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me for this pre-concert talk for our 20th anniversary season finale concerts. I'm really excited to share this music with you. It is truly exhilarating music, and I it's it's just a fantastic way to end the season and to end 20 years uh, as we celebrate the past and we celebrate looking forward to the future, our next decade. So this program has uh, two composers, uh, Poulenc, a French composer, and Bernstein, who, as we all know, is the American maestro. I have not seen the movie Maestro yet, but after these concerts, this is going to be one of the first things I'm going to do uh, when things slow down a bit. I really look forward to, to the movie because I've heard such great things about it. Um, the piece that we start the program with is the Poulenc Gloria. It has an interesting background. Poulenc wasn't much of a religious person, um, but there was a tragic incident in which a very close friend of his uh, died uh, in a terrible accident. And Poulenc was quite moved by this and returned to some of his uh, religious upbringing, his Roman Catholic upbringing in particular, and wrote some incredible pieces. Um, he wrote his set of motets for the Christian Lenten season of the year, some very poignant uh, texts and music. He would later write a, a set of motets for the Advent season in the Christian calendar, uh, the time of the year that um, prefigures Christmas, exquisite gems, tougher than nails, <laughs> unaccompanied pieces um, that are truly uh, among the finest little motets in the repertoire. Hard to perform, but they need to sound as if they're not hard. That's always our job uh, as professionals and as musicians is to make the music sound like it just flows out of us. And we have performed a few of his motets and we'll definitely perform more of his motets. He also wrote his Stabat Mater and his Mass in G, but his signature choral work is the Gloria. Um, it is a piece in six movements. It is for full orchestra and choir and soprano soloist. And I am thrilled that thanks to the generous support of the Tucson Desert Song Festival, we will have joining us for this, uh, this piece in this program, Nicole Cabell, who in 2005 won the prestigious Cardiff Singer of the World competition. So it's a real honor to be able to perform with her and share the stage with her, as I have had the opportunity to do with many other stars. Thanks again to our friends at Tucson Desert Song Festival. So she's featured in two of these movements uh, of, of the Gloria, and the choir is predominantly featured throughout. It's it's truly a choral piece. It's an interesting piece. It's um, and, and Poulenc described it uh, in in really fun and humorous ways. Um, it's a serious piece by all means, um, but it's it's a playful um, setting of these words that are often set in more solemn ways. You've heard us perform settings of this text, Gloria, which comes from the mass. Um, it's been set by countless composers in an array of uh, treatments, uh, but Poulenc's is especially playful, sometimes witty, but then there are also incredibly prayerful um, and reverent moments in it. it it's, it's a delight. It has been on my list of pieces to perform well, since we started True Concord 20 years ago, and this will be my first time conducting it. It'll be True Concord's first time performing it, and I can't wait to share it with you. <clears throat> the second half, we open with um, Bernstein's ebullient uh, and also playful and fun uh, overture to Candide. Candide is one of his signature works. Of course, we all think of West Side Story as uh, his, perhaps his most famous accomplishment. He was the maestro. He was at the height of his career uh, when he wrote the Chichester Psalms, another piece that uh, will be uh, per part that we'll be performing on this program. But we open the second set with 
it seems like this is a great way to kick off the second half with the Candide Overture with so many of those catchy tunes um, from Candide, uh, which is probably his second best known um, musical or operetta behind West Side Story. But at the height of his career, as he's the music director of the New York Philharmonic, uh, he's written West Side Story, um, he's asked to write a piece, <clears throat> the Chichester Psalms. Um, and that Chichester is, uh, is a cathedral in England, and they were the commissioning organization. And they asked him, they said, we know you're really busy, but we'd love for you to, to write a piece for a festival, a cathedral, uh, a festival of cathedral choirs. And he agreed and he was given carte blanche, anything he wanted. And so interestingly enough, he set a bunch of Hebrew texts um, from the, the um, book of Psalms. And um, it's in three parts. Uh, it starts with this just unadulterated uh, opening of, of just sheer praise. Um, it's, it's Psalm 108 and Psalm 100. It's um, a, a, a big bang opening, if you will, um, that leads to a second movement that is an incredibly poignant juxtaposition of, of two uh, affects. One of this calm, serene setting of the 23rd Psalm. This is a, a Psalm that I know is near and dear to many. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, he makes me lie down by green pastures. Um, it is pastoral. It is um, idyllic in its content as far as words, but Bernstein also brings a musical setting of these words that is very soothing and comforting. And in fact, um, he elects to, uh, to assign many of these words to a boy soprano. I guess as a way to to hearken back to the innocence of of the message of this uh, of this psalm, and it is juxtaposed against another psalm um, that talks about why Psalm two. Why do the nations rage? Why do they rage in war and against each other? Um, and so, where we start the second movement with this calm, the Lord is my shepherd, by green pastures and still waters then the music suddenly changes uh, and we get the sort of the aggressive sounds of the percussion and the brass and, um, and the choir, uh, just this intense Hebrew text, why do the nations rage? And then that gives way to the boy soprano who returns again and reminds us all of the hopefulness and the possibility of peace and the piece ends at the third movement. It's sort of as a reprise of the beginning with a little bit angular and more dissonant approach that, um, that, that calms down, settles down, and we get this beautiful sort of lilting melody on the words, it is a beautiful thing for humanity to live together in peace. And I think that's the ultimate message that Bernstein was wanting to send. And then we return to Candide. Uh, we started with the overture, just a fun, fun piece. I would say perhaps one of the best overtures ever written. And it's certainly um, one of Bernstein's most popular instrumental works at only five minutes. It is a gem. And then we'll close the program with the very last piece from Candide entitled Make Our Garden Grow. So the two main characters, Candide and Cunegonde, have gone through all kinds of travails and tumult. And in the end, they realize that what they can truly rely on and depend on is themselves, the goodwill, goodwill of other people, and just sheer hard work and determination that no matter what befalls us, what befalls humanity together, we can accomplish great things and we can make our garden grow into something beautiful. True Concord has sung this piece on a number of occasions, uh, including on subscription, uh, at least one subscription concert, but also sort of as uh, part of impromptu performances that we've given around town and at donor events and such. I, I kind of think of it as, as a theme song of, of ours. It's the message is all about the possibilities um, when people come together, they work together with a common vision and a common purpose 
with determination and just good old fashioned hard work. And to me, that is indicative of what we have been able to do at True Concord, thanks to our wonderful musicians, thanks to our visionary board, our incredible volunteers, and of course, our amazing and, and generous um, supporters, including you who, who, and all of you who are watching today. We couldn't be here today without all of you. It truly does take a community. And so I am grateful um, that we're here at our 20th anniversary season, the season finale concerts, and singing this incredible music by Poulenc and Bernstein, including these words with its just incredible message of make our garden grow. So thank you to all of you for helping us make our true concord grow into, a, uh, into just a wonderful feast. Well, I'm pleased to be joined now by the one, the only, <laughs> Justin Rafa. And Justin, thank you for joining me. Um, by way of continued introduction, this concert coming up, um, you will be involved with it, of course, singing in the tenor section. Um, you'll be one of two people, actually on this concert who will have performed, who performed on our very first concert in November of 2004, the Honestly. inauguration of what was then Tucson Chamber Artists. Um, that other person is Ken Mars. I know you know Ken. I know him well. Yep, because Ken on that first concert not only played he played he played the double bass, but he also sang in the tenor section on that oh, concert. Yes, he was a singer. Yep. So there'll be two of you, well, three of us. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the very first concert um, for True Concord, formerly known as Tucson Chamber Artists. So I'm really glad that you're taking part in this concert and this season finale program for our 20th anniversary season. And while most people recognize you and know who you are, tell tell all of us a little bit about yourself, where you live, what you're doing, and, and anything else exciting you want to share. Well, thanks, Eric. It is an absolute joy to get to speak with you today and kind of reflect on our time together in this ensemble. Uh, my current home is in eastern Washington State in a community called the Tri-Cities. I've been living here for... 15 years and 15 I, years already i lead a community course here called mid columbia master singers that's uh, my primary day job but i still love singing in choirs myself uh, and i'm very privileged to be a tenor in several groups including yours for all these many years well justin let's not sell yourself short here in what you've accomplished up in the tri cities of washington because you're not just you don't just lead that organization you have grown that organization significantly over your 15 years there as you have my friend uh, we've invested in what we love it's a matter of building a good team of people getting the right people on the bus who share your vision uh, who share your your mission of what it is that you hope to accomplish. And uh, I'm very proud of the role that I've played to help the community choir grow uh, in terms of its resources, in terms of its uh, overall community profile. That's, it's my mission just to get people to sing, uh, build community singing opportunities. Uh, and I've also veered into doing some advocacy work. We also need people uh, who are reminding decision makers and elected officials the power of what we do, the importance of arts and culture, uh, and the importance of funding it, because what we do uh, takes resources, as we all know. So I've had the opportunity to serve uh, on our State Arts Commission and build a relationship with those decision makers and budget writers and remind them that we play an important role in the life and the quality of our communities. Well said, Justin, and congratulations on all your successes up there. Thank you. And thanks for continuing to bring all your talents down here to Tucson on a regular basis. Well, thanks for the ongoing invitation. I'm so glad I've, I've made the cut after all this time. 
Well, your re-audition is scheduled for next year, I think, but uh, <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> Perfect. So let's just go back in time for a sec, because, I mean, you and I have experienced so much together with this organization, our growing pains, our, our triumphs, our, our setbacks, um, you know, the challenges of doing what we do, and you've, you've experienced that yourself in leading your own group. But, I mean, what are some of the memories as you as you think about these these many years performing with us i have a very clear memory of this organization in the beginning when you first solicited several of us you had this wild idea about putting together a, a professional core choral ensemble i have a very distinct memory of going to the first official board meeting that was held in the home of one of those initial singers. Uh, of course, my wonderful partner, Molly Holleran, who was uh, the first administrator for the organization that did a lot of the design work for the programs, the logo, the website. Um, it was such an exciting time to get to be a part of something fresh and brand new. And it was particularly important for me because I was a, a brand new public school teacher I was down on the border in Bisbee, Arizona, and as excited as I was to be a new music educator, it was still important to me to have professional musical opportunities to make adult music with other professionals. And uh, this organization certainly gave me that opportunity. It's our pleasure, and I'm so glad you could be there on the very ground level. Um, so I have a couple thoughts. Do you remember what we paid you the first time you, you sang for us? Sure do. I, and I tell this story often because uh, it's, it's just funny to think back of how much the organization has grown in terms of, of what it is able to provide singers in terms of compensation. But you promised us all a hundred bucks flat fee for the week. And I was delighted. You know, I was you know, uh, going to be a poor graduate student and I very happily accepted the $100 offer. And then at the end of the week, when you totaled all the receipts at the door, you said, sorry, everybody, I, I can only give you 50. And that was okay. I was, I understood that we were building something together. You know, this takes time. So yeah, I remember that first $50 paycheck. <laughs> well, I remember it well too, because uh, what I'll remember most is the graciousness with which you and all the other artists um, just went with the flow on it. And, and I said, look, I'm going to just keep working at this. I'm going to try to pay you more to pay you more next time. And we've been paying everybody more ever since. And that's, um, in large part due to the commitment of you folks who've been sticking with us year after year and our incredible, generous supporters. Um, one other memory I have in that first year was actually, Justin, you were responsible for our first shall we say, mini tour. Um, certainly our first performance outside of Tucson, because right. that was in the, that first season, we gave just two uh, concerts, two, two different programs. One in November of 2004, which we gave twice. And then a program in the spring of that year, which was a, a program of English music, including parts two and three of messiah yes and you arranged for us to perform down in bisbee one of those uh, one of those performances of that program yeah i was the high school choir director in bisbee it was my first teaching job out of undergrad so i was commuting up to tucson for all of these rehearsals and performances but it was really exciting to get to share that experience with my community, Bisbee, and certainly back then, a uh, very small you know, population of six or 7,000 people, not a lot of professionally trained classical musicians. So for me, as the new maestro in town, who was also leading the Bisbee Community Chorus, I thought this is a great opportunity to showcase this wonderful new group. I was also the music director at St. John's, the Episcopal Church in Bisbee, which is where we uh, hosted that performance. Well, and if I remember correctly, I think you packed the church for us. It wasn't a huge place, but I think they turned out in, in, in droves. We had a good showing. 
<laughs> a lot of good memories from that first year and and those early successes of course inspired us to plan a second year and then a third and fourth etc and and here we are now at our at our 20th anniversary season and you've been there for much if not most of it it's pretty incredible you know for years i always felt like i was the young guy in tenor sections that i sang and suddenly uh i am not i'm kind of one of the middle-aged guys <laughs> <laughs> well, time is well, a time is a funny thing but i think it's also a testament eric to the to the trust and the faith that those initial singers had in you that we really resonated with your vision uh we really believed in the work that you wanted to achieve and so you know we were happy to get 50 bucks instead of 100 and and look at the tremendous growth that the organization has seen it is an absolute success story and i'm proud of the very small role that I, I may have played in all of that. Well, thank you, Justin. It's, it's not been a small role. And let's not call you middle-aged. Let's call you one of the veterans. How about that? I'll take it. <laughs> so with this program coming up, we're singing uh, Poulenc Gloria and Bernstein Chichester Psalms and Make Our Garden Grow. Have you sung all of these pieces? I Because with True Concord, we've performed Chichester at least two other times. Yes, I've had the opportunity to sing all three works. I first did the Bernstein when I was an undergraduate student. And I had not done a lot of Hebrew before. And I, I do remember sitting in the rehearsal, working on the second movement, uh, the very risk movement, La Maragashu. Yeah. I just felt so tongue-tied. I could not wrap my lips around making the right sounds at the right tempo. And I just started giggling. It's like, oh my gosh, it is, this is really hard. Uh, but really fell in love with that piece. And you know, I'm, I'm a proud graduate of Westminster Choir College, an institution that had uh, a long-term relationship with Leonard Bernstein. So I have a real special affinity for his music. And, and that piece, it's just so rewarding to get to sing. It's very, very exciting to listen to in addition to being one of the performers up on stage. Absolutely. Now, the other Bernstein piece, Make Our Garden Grow from Candide. I know you've sung this with us because we have pulled this off the shelf from time to time for a lot of impromptu performances that we, we gave. Um, but I think we also did it on at least one subscription concert. I'm a big fan of this piece. Um, it's, it's just a it's like a barn burner of a of a of an ender, and and I also love the message of the piece too because it's it's like, you know what? We're just going to roll up our sleeves, do the hard work we need to do, and make our garden grow. And to me, it's it's in a way, it's kind of been a theme for for true Concord um, because of that, and kind of this larger metaphor about how we build community. Yeah. And certainly the power of core organizations who bring people together that the many become one, become focused on this united effort, this product that we can't make individually, right? The magical thing about choirs is that many people have the shared goal of creating something beautiful that you and I can't do on our own. And that's why I love choir the most. Well, I love choir too, and I love putting choir with orchestra together and all these works, the Bernstein pieces and the Poulenc Gloria. Have you done the Poulenc Gloria? I have. In fact, my audition for graduate school at the U of A was a Poulenc motet. I had the opportunity to study the piece. Uh, and a few years ago, we did perform it here, my choir and our local symphony. Uh, we had the chance to prep it. And I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the piece. I think it's one of the more accessible works of Poulenc. It's very pleasant to listen to, not as kind of jagged and harmonically challenging as some of his other works. And again, to me, a very satisfying, rewarding piece to sing. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think in total, these pieces are just a great way to end a 20th anniversary season. It's like ending with a bang, one big party, if you will, with, with this, with this great music. And I'm so glad you're going to be part of it, Justin. And again, Thank you.
for all of your, uh, lending all of your time and talent to True Concord and, and congratulations on all your successes and in, in all your work up in the Pacific Northwest. And I'll look forward to seeing you really soon. Well, thank you, Eric. I, I must say I'm slightly disappointed that we haven't had the opportunity to revive the Pinkham Wedding Cantata on which I was a featured soloist on the very first recording that we made. That would have been a great 20th anniversary splash, but, you know, we'll save that for the 25th. I was just going to say, we'll pull that out for our silver anniversary, but you got to re-audition for the solo. You got it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Justin. Thank you, Eric. So see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. I am joined now by my next guest. Christian Holton. Hi, Christian. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Not bad. Where Where am I catching you right now? Oh, oh. Um, I'm just you know downstairs. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm kitchen? upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today. Um. So, for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, what grade you're in. You know, what um, what's your favorite subject at school, and what activities you're involved in, and such. Yeah, uh, for sure. So I'm in sixth grade. I'm 12. And uh, my favorite subject is definitely social studies. I love history and stuff. And, you know, it's always fun. And um, I've been playing piano for about six years now. And I also have been playing percussion for my school for about two years. Um, yeah, it's it's been absolutely great. And then also I'm really a sports guy. And I'm playing um, basketball for the past five to six years. And you're on a club team, right? Yeah, yeah, I am. So you're playing lots of games, lots of tournaments? Yep, yep. We pretty much a game every weekend. And once a month at least, we go to Phoenix to play a few games. Well, it's always a pleasure to watch you play because you're, you're a heck of a basketball player, but you're also a really good musician. And I'm proud of you for both. Yeah. Um, so tell me, are you uh, you excited to make your true Concord debut, your professional debut? Yeah, yeah I'm, of course. I mean, it's always been a dream of mine since I was little to be able to perform with you on with your organization. And, and it's just it's a dream come true, basically. Well, that's cool. I don't know if you remember this, but when you were really little. You used to talk about how you wanted to start True Concord for Kids. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. That was that was a pretty funny idea, I guess. Well, that was a good idea. You know, you 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 thought that maybe you could spread the joy of True Concord through your network of uh, of friends and and other kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So here's a way to to um, engage some of your your friends. I hope you'll invite them to come hear your your big performance now. You've um, you've got other public uh, performance experiences. Talk talk to us about that. Okay, so um, yeah, for as I mentioned earlier, I've been you know I've been doing piano for so long, so that obviously comes with performances, and I've I've been involved in many recitals amongst other um, kids who play piano, and and that's fun. And then when I was with the boys' course for many years, several performances in front of hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, just you know, singing our hearts away. That's cool. But you've also played the piano at church. Yes, yeah, that's that's true. And also, we've had I've had band concerts before for our school. How about when we went to the musical instrument museum in Phoenix, and you know, we spent I don't know how many hours there, but I think you spent about half of the time there, just playing the piano in the lobby for anybody who would listen. You remember that? <laughs> yeah that was that was fun just playing the pieces I loved so when people have asked me if if you're nervous about making this performance I've said I don't think so because frankly I think you really like to perform for others <laughs> yeah I mean I think over the course of time you just get used to it okay so what are you doing to prepare for your big debut with and with this piece in particular well, for this piece um, specifically, you know, uh, as you know, it's in Hebrew. So I've been uh, working on the uh, translations and how to pronounce all these different words. I mean, 
yeah, because obviously it's a new language and I've, I've really never sung that before. So that's a big part. And a, another part is just I've been working with a vocal teacher. In fact, a singer who's multiple times has sung with True Concord um, is working with me to, you know, just broaden my solo sound as a singer and just getting used to my voice and just being confident in that, yeah, I can do this and I can do it well. Yeah, well, I have no doubt you can do it well. And I'm, I'm glad you're taking all those measures to make sure uh, that you do a good job. So what do you like about this piece, your solo or the piece in general? What are some things that that you really like about it? Well, one thing that I really like is that in in general, my solo is just more of a peaceful, just elegant sort of um, flowing music. But mm -hmm. when after kind of just in the middle of my solo, when I'm, when I finish one part, there's just this eruption of percussion and singing voices of just, and the translations, you know, are like, you know, why is there fighting? Why is there war? And it's just, and it's really powerful. And I really like how it, Bernstein was able to translate from just a peaceful boy singing to, to um, emotions raging of just, why why are these bad things going on and then it and it ends it, the, the well the second movement specifically ends with this the nice solo keep going on and then just you, you know the singers in the background and it's just it's really comforting and it's just a soothing ending to the second movement well that that's a really good observation and and i i, I share your um love of that second movement because it's it really has the two elements like you suggest the, the words you're singing come from the 23rd psalm which is a very popular psalm it's recited or sung at um lots of funerals and other um uh, solemn occasions because they're words of comfort and then yeah. yet we get these other words um that Bernstein is juxtaposed on the Psalm 23. He's like, why do we have all this stuff happening in the world? And, and in a way, you, my friend, are that voice of calm. You are that voice of peace, of serenity. And I think it's fitting that, that Bernstein wanted to have a boy sing this soprano solo and not a woman. Um, it's, it's, there's an innocence uh, of of having a boy do it sort of an innocence that I think that we all should try to reclaim in terms of the ultimate message of this piece, which is living together in harmony, living together with in peace with one another. And so I'm really delighted that you are going to be an instrument of that piece. And I'm really looking forward to sharing the stage with you. You have any other thoughts before we close it out there, big guy? You know, I just just want to say again that I'm really excited to work with you for the first time, really. For well, with least, True Concord. At least first time professionally. Do you remember when I do you remember when I asked you to do it? Do you remember what you said? No, actually, I don't remember. Well, after you agreed, you said, Well, am I gonna get paid? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I now I do remember that. And then I, you kind of caught me off guard, and I, and and while I was hemming and hawing, you said, "Oh, don't worry about it, Dad. Just take me out for dinner." Yeah. <laughs> of my choice, though. Dinner? Of my choice. Yeah. Yeah, your uh, choice. Uh, so. Yeah, you know, you know, um, you know, just something, some, just something, something pleasant. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say now. I haven't made up my mind. There's so many oh, okay. options. Okay. All right. Well, you let me know. Yeah. Okay. I will. All right. Well, thanks for taking time to talk with me, Christian. I'll I'll see you downstairs in a little bit, but I'll I'm really looking forward to seeing you on stage. It's going to be a, a special moment for all of us. Yeah, likewise, I'm looking forward to it too as well. And thanks to all of you for joining us for this pre-concert talk. I do sincerely hope that you'll join us for this incredible concert of riveting, exhilarating, exciting music. And just, a, I can't imagine a, a better way to close out our 20th anniversary season. And it would be especially fitting and appropriate and satisfying if you could be there because you have been part of our success these 20 years, getting us to this exciting point. So please do join us for these season finale concerts. 
And I wish you a happy spring and a very happy and healthful summer. Take care.